with your stick in Bell with Virginia. It's preaching time. Please join Pastor Randall Wilson. Second Kings four, verse thirty-eight. And Elisha came again to Gilgal, and there was a dearth in the land. And the sons of the prophets were sitting before him, and he said unto his servant, Set on the great pot, and seethe pottage for the sons of the prophets. And one went out into the field to gather herbs, and found a wild vine, and gathered thereof wild gourds, his lap full, and came and shred them into the pot of pottage, for they knew them not. So they poured out for the men to eat, and it came to pass as they were eating of the pottage that they cried out and said, O thou man of God, there is death in the pot. And they could not eat thereof. And he said, Then bring meal. And he cast it into the pot, and he said, Pour out for the people that they may eat. And there was no harm in the pot. I want to preach today on the subject of death in the pot. Amen. This started because there was a famine. It started because the folks were hungry and needed some kind of sustenance. And God had provided sustenance, but somebody come up with a provision outside of what God had provided. He went out in the fields and he gathered uh, gourds, wild gourds, poison gourds, and he put them in the pot. And then whenever the men began to eat and somebody got sick here and somebody got sick there, one died and another in the hospital, and somebody had sense enough to say, hey, there's something wrong with what we're consuming. And they cried to the man of God and said, Oh, thou man of God, there's death in the pot. Of course, he had the answer. He took the meal and put in the pot, and when he put that meal in the pot, that meal absorbed the poison. Right. And that meal made it to where folks could eat. I see in that a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. I see what he did for us as the bread of life, as the meal of life that absorbed the poison that was eaten away at our soul. Yes, sir. Amen. And he's gave us eternal life. Amen. Just before I pray, I want to make comment on America, on West Virginia, on Charleston and Kanawha County. And I want to make comment on Witcher Creek. Campbell's Creek and all these other creeks and hollers that we live in around here. There's a famine in our land, folks. Everywhere you look, folks are looking for something that will give them satisfaction down in their soul. They've came to all these different things and they said, well, we'll put a little bit of this in the stew and see if that'll help us out. But instead of helping We've just went further and further down. Now, we, we, we call ourselves a, a Christian nation. People will brag about the fact of how good America is. And listen, I would rather live in America as any nation in the world. But we're far from what we used to be. We're, as far as a Christian nation, we've started on that slide downhill. And there's death in our pot. Amen. Because of the famine, hunger prevails. And 
people in America this morning or tonight or today are searching for something to satisfy their soul. God gave a provision for that, but man wants to add to that provision. And whenever we add something to God's provision, we just mess it up. Amen. That's what this fellow did. There in the Garden of Eden, God made provision for man. But man messed that up by his action. If he'd have listened to God and did what God told him to, we'd still be there. But they didn't. And in despair, they turned to the man of God. and God's man said, well, I know how to fix it. Amen. 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 Our Heavenly Father, we, we do pray that we'd be a help and not an offense to folks. We pray, Lord, that they may see what we're talking about for America today. I ask you, God, to help me that I might be able to present things in the light of warning folks out and not warning folks in. I pray, Lord, they may come out from among the world and be a separated people. And God, that what we would put out would be the pure bread of life. And our Father, that folks could learn and hear and know that there's a reality to serving God. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The name of our TV program is Preaching Time. Uh, today it's cooking time. <laughs> Let me go get my pot. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh -huh. Well, let's see. That towel looks like Nancy Hoy's rolls <laughs> is in here. No, that's not what it is. I wonder what's in here. You do too. Amen. I guarantee you it's not life, but it's death in the pot. That's right. What's killing America? There's a famine in America today. There's a famine in America's land of one of real preaching of the Word of God. Amen. A real preacher with a real backbone that is stand up and tell folks of the Word of God. Right. Now, I know what will happen. Probably one of the first things that comes about for death in the pot is this fella. Uh-oh, somebody's calling. Yeah? Randy Wilson did what? <laughs> I knew it all along. He ain't a preacher. He's flipped his lid. He's crazy in a bed, bud. That old gossip job, you get on the telephone, yeah. you know what I'm talking about? Some of you can't wait to get home so you can call somebody and tell them what went on in church today. Now, I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about, you know, somebody really legitimately using the phone, but I'm talking about those long tongues. The Bible says that uh, a tail bearer or slander goes up and down among the people, uh, they're more trouble than they're worth. Amen. Death in the pot. Amen. Whenever you whenever you talk, you need to talk of something that'll build somebody up Amen. instead of something that'll tear somebody down. Amen. Death in the pot. The telephone, that, that, I think that's bad, but let's see what other kind of a ingredient we can get in here. Oh, well, looky here. <laughs> yeah, buddy. I mean, I can see this right now. Set that little baby down there. He looks like he's a little crippled today. Flip him up here. Uh-huh, get me a cheer. That there's Campbell's Creek for chair. Get me a cheer. Oh, about to forget something. Man needs the flipper. <laughs> Amen. We're talking about, here we go now, boys. Yeah, well, there's the HBO station. We all like that. And now we got this here pay-per-view. Uh, we got the, uh, all of it. Hey, Amen. We're talking about death in the pot. Huh? We're talking about people. 
people that spends their lifetime just sitting there flipping chan. Amen. Is that right? Amen. I can see. Now, now this is just a tool. I want you to understand that. This, this, there's nothing wrong with that. Right. It's what comes over that that there's something wrong with. You can take and use that to broadcast the heaven play. Right. You can take and use that to broadcast a church service. Right. But you can also take and use that to broadcast all kind of home-destroying filth and all kind of foul language. Uh, you know, uh, they cuss on that about every other word. I can think if I come over and sit down in your house uh, and I just ripped out some kind of a big oath, uh, you'd tell me, preacher, get out of my house talking like that. But you'll let that thing sit there and you'll say, well, it just cussed once in the whole program. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I'm thinking our, Ma our Micah is eat up with all kind of things. There's death in our pot. And, and, and you know, uh, well, let's see. What can I watch on the TV? Oh, well. I mean, the Super Bowl, everybody got to watch the Super Bowl. Uh, uh, certainly, uh, we can skip church one Sunday to watch the Super Bowl. Hey, who wants to go out for a pass there? Brandy, oh, uh, Gary, anybody else? There, Joe, way in the back. We'll give Joe a pass back there. Look yonder. Good defense, Phil. Uh, I'm saying that, look, look here, America today is bowing down to that old sport. God. Now, now, I don't have a thing against football. I like to watch it myself. I don't have a thing against baseball. But I want to tell you something. Come Super Bowl Sunday, I'm going to be in church and not glued to some cotton-picking television. And any pastor or any church that I pastor is not going to play the Super Bowl in the church house on that Sunday. Or any other Sunday for that matter. I'm saying America is dying and we're looking for something to satisfy our soul. But there's death in our pot. Amen. Everywhere I look, people are dying and it's getting worse. It's getting worse and worse. Uh, uh, what in the world I find here? Oh, there's not. It's got a snake on it. And it's black. I wonder if I ought to maybe hum a few bars of it. See what I can do. Enough, that's enough to kill a few right there. Turn it down. Turn it off. Turn it off. I don't want to hear it. I told you I got connections you don't know nothing about. But I'm saying that that right there would kill a mule. I couldn't. Uh, the fella let me have this, and, and they said you can play anything on it you want. And I thought, well, I'll listen to them and see which one I want to play. I listened to about 30 seconds of the first song and I said, I don't want to hear no more. Amen. And yet there's people, amen, preacher, that they probably people in this room that would know that group if I called their name. Amen. They call that heavy metal. They call that rock music. And it's suicide music. And it's music that just makes somebody mad. Just to destroy somebody. They death in that part. If you got it, what you ought to do when I get through is go home like you did there in the Bible and just burn it. Amen. Amen. That's good. Amen. Death in the pot. People sit there and watch that MTV and listen to that rock music. Give me another little shot of it there, Brother John. Let me see. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. There you go. Now, now we're in business. We got our, we got our rock music, got our MTV. Now I've even got me a Bud Light. I don't know why I happened to come up with that one, but that's what it says. I look at that, it says Bud and I'm a thinking, bud, you'd be a whole lot wiser if you just leave that alone and not fool with that at all. There's death in that pot. I believe, I believe myself that that is the worst drug in America. Now, the, the, the
the uh, media, the government is on a tobacco company. But I believe beer is the worst drug in America. It's accepted. It's legal. You can buy it down to Mount of Holla. Uh, people got it in their homes. They slip around and they drink that stuff. And it's a home wrecker. There's death in that pot. Amen. And then go a little further. Same story. Amen. Same story. Important. I wonder from where. I'd say probably from hell. I'd say the devil was right behind all that brew. I want to tell you something about the Bible talks about wine. It talks about it in, in the book of Proverbs. And it said, who has woe? Do you know what woe is? Woe is, is whenever God says woe, I mean the horse better stop. Right. Whenever God says woe, there's problems and troubles to follow. It said, who has sorrow? You know, how many people have came to me and said, Preacher, if I just hadn't got drunk, I wouldn't have wrecked my car. If I just hadn't got drunk, I wouldn't have shot my little boy or my little girl. I wouldn't have shot my brother or my sister. If I just hadn't been drunk, it said, who has contentions? You know, most drunks wants to be argumentative about everything. Don't tell me nothing about them. I know who they are. They come in where I work down there and they, they're, they're sure that me as a man of God couldn't put them out in the street just because they've been tipping the bottle. But I will. I guarantee you I will. They get contentious about it. The Bible said that it brings woe, it brings sorrow, it brings contention, it brings wounds, it brings babbling, it brings redness of eyes. They that tarry long at the wine. There's a famine in our land. But I don't think that it can be, I don't think that it can be, uh, uh, our soul can be satisfied with the uh, alcohol. What we need is a drink of, of the water of life. Uh, that, that's where the satisfaction comes for our soul. Uh, and I think, I, I'm not finished yet, man. There's got to be some more stuff down in here. I wonder, you know, while we're at it, I just might as well go ahead, huh? Let's see what this little baby is. Luck of the draw, it says. Uh -huh. We'll just scratch. I'll just scratch it. Oh, both them numbers match. I'll just put this in my pocket, and I'll be back at the while, and I'll go down to the wherever I go down to, and I'll just redeem this little baby, and I'll come back and put my ties in the church. Hey, listen, buddy. Just keep them out of my church. I don't want them. One guy said, well, I won $30,000 on a lottery. I said, yeah, that's 30,000 children that went without supper so you could have it. You're a thief and you're a crook and the lottery is right out of hell and there's death in that pot. Amen. Thank you. Uh-huh. Oh, well, let's see. I'm a real red-blooded American. Surely I ought to put one of these babies on. Huh? I don't know. How do I look? See, I wanted a clip on, but Molly said that I had to get my ears pierced. And I thought I'll do a lot of things for a sermon, but I ain't gonna do that. Hey, you let you look at me. I wish the TV could just zero right in on me for a minute. You look at that ear. I'm telling you, you look to me like a sissy. I don't care if you're Mr. T. I don't care how tough you are. You look to me like a girl. Get that earring out of your ear. Get your hair cut and look like a man. Amen. Thank you. Death in the pot. Well, there's more stuff. And America trying <coughs> America, excuse me, trying to satisfy that longing down in their soul. They try to satisfy it with the, the bottle. And they try to satisfy it with the TV. And they try to satisfy it with the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, men looking like uh, women and women looking like men. Oh, my goodness, I broke one of my props. <laughs> It says right on the package that cigarette smoking is harmful to your health. Of course, you don't believe the book of God to be true, so 
Who cares? About, yeah, a cigarette in my head, a horrible. <laughs> Oh, I see something in there worse than a cigarette. Yeah, this thing progresses, man. Uh huh. Uh -huh. For you uninformed, that's a pin joint. Yeah. Uh huh. doesn't come in here. <laughs> Does anybody here know what that is? Huh? <laughs> yeah, absolutely that's what it is. That's illegal. That's a crack pot. <laughs> now I think crack pots use crack pots. I think you're crazy. Yeah. If you go dumping a little something in there, take a little mash and mm, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I'm telling you, it'll kill you dead in the hammer. They'll find you a laying on the street. They'll find you a laying in the gutter with your toes turned up toward the sun. You'll be dead in the micro. There's death in that pot. Amen. That's right. If you think cigarette smoking is harmful to your health, you go ahead and get a hold of that marijuana. You go ahead and get a hold of that crack. You go ahead and get a hold of any kind of dope. There's really death in that pot. And America is eat up with it. I graduated from high school in 1963 at DuPont High School right down here in Bell. And I wouldn't have known what that was if you'd have showed it to me. I, I, I wouldn't have known what a, a marijuana joint was if you'd have showed it to me. I didn't know what it was. But I figure that I can go right out here on Witcher Creek and find these little kids and they can identify this for me today. There's a famine in America. And we're trying to fill that void in our soul by using death in the pot. Uh -huh. Well, I'm about halfway. Uh, uh, Rick Fleischman said, you don't have any snakes in there. I got a bunch of them. <laughs> This is good. This says the prison epistle of the Reverend Sun Ying Moon. Amen. Fine line, I'm a fly. Amen. The Americans not only eat up with a bunch of dope heads, they not only eat up with a bunch of sex crazy television sports watching, sm uh, pot smoking, dope inhaling, uh, but we're wanting to put these guys and say, uh, all of these false cults are just flooding in this country. We want to say, well, they're just as legal as anybody else. I say, run them out. Amen. Of course, you're going to call that hate, hate literature for long and they'll stop me from preaching it. Uh, uh, they think. So I better just keep on preaching while I can. Yeah. But there's death in the pot with all the cults. You listen to me, every one of them that does not claim the blood of Jesus Christ yeah. as the only way to heaven, they're a cult and you better stay out. You'll not find life. You'll find death there every time. Yeah. That goes for the Jehovah's Witnesses, the Mormons, the Seventh-day Adventists, you name them, the Unitarians, all of the cults of the world, every one of them, there's death in that pot. Yeah. Oh, thou man of God, he said, there's death in the pot. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, looky here what I found. Some more, some more literature. Uh-huh. Surely this would be good stuff. Big old book. It says, and I'm sure they'll be glad to know the Baptist preacher's got his hands on this. Morals and dogma of the ancient and accepted Scottish rite of Freemasonry. I got you, boys. I got your book. There's death in that pot. 
Now, if you think just being a Mason's going to get you to heaven, you're crazy as that dopehead bunch. Yeah, right. They come over there just as unsaved as a frog and come over and take that little fern and throw it down in the casket and say, I'll see you on the other side, brother. And I think, my God in heaven, I don't want to go to the same other side they're going to. I don't want them seeing me over there. I want to go to the glory land and it'll not be because I was a Scottish right or a York right or any other right but the right of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, let's see what else we got in here. Oh, well, this one, this one is a Bible. I saved it for last because, in my opinion, it's the most dangerous of all. It's a holy Bible. The new international version. The one some of you guys is carrying. Uh -huh. That one they're promoting down at the Bible bookstore. That one that everybody's accepting. Uh, you go to a Billy Graham crusade and they're accepting it. You go to uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the liberals and they're accepting it. Everybody can get along with this Bible. But the problem is they don't read it. Because if they read it, they'd know that this Bible don't know what it's talking about. In the book of Mark, chapter 1, New International Version. Well, let's do the King James Bible. In the book of Mark, chapter 1, King James Bible. Oh, no, preacher, you don't, don't tell me you're getting ready to show me something. I thought all this argument was just, just a, a, a argument for a, argument's sake. I didn't know there's really anything wrong with it. In Mark, is this King James? The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Amen. As is written in the prophets. See that? P-R-O-P-H-E-T-S. Prophets. More than one. Right. You been to school? Yeah. Amen. Did you know that an S on the end of a word means more than one? Amen. As, as, the, the, as is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Now, wait a minute. This guy just quoted two prophets, didn't he? He quoted Malachi to start with when he said, Behold, I send my messenger. Didn't he? Yeah. Before thy face. Yes. Then he quoted, uh, 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 quoted Isaiah. Right. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Yeah. All right, let's look in the New International Version. The beginning of the gospel about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you. No, it's not. That's not in Isaiah. That's in Malachi. I mean, this guy don't know his Bible. And you're trusting him to translate it? Look in Malachi chapter 3. Get my old black back sword out here. Yeah. Malachi chapter 3, verse 1. Behold, I will send my messenger. <laughs> Isn't that right? Yeah. That's not Isaiah. Yeah. That's Malachi. And your brand new, spiffied up, new international version don't know what it's talking about. It don't know one prophet from another. And furthermore, it don't know the Spirit of God. It went over yonder to the book and it took the blood out and it has applied man's work and anything that suits anybody. Death in that pot. Death in that pot. I think for alcohol, I think that we need the, the water of life to replace that and put me in. I think for all this garbage literature that we're seeing here today, I think we need to put the book of God back in our churches and back in our homes. It'll help that pot. I think for dope, we need the fullness of the Spirit of God. I think for carnality, we need the mind of Jesus Christ. And I think for, uh, for religion, we need the gospel of Jesus Christ. And put that in the pot and buddy, anybody can 
Eve. Amen. Whosoever will, let him come and take of the water of life free. Well, they went out there. They took that. They set that pot on. They was they were seething, boiling stuff in the pot. This guy put put all this junk in the pot. And when he put that in there, everybody went to eat. And everybody went to die. But God's man come along and said, uh, "We need to." Uh, Return to the old paths. How's that? How's that? Sorry, Lena. Lena has to clean that up. Amen. Look at that whiskey bottle. Get away from me. If that was a snake laying there, we'd run just as hard as we could run. If that was a snake laying there, we'd unplug that sucker. If that was a snake laying there, we wouldn't listen to it. If that was a snake laying there, we wouldn't read it. But I'm telling you that everything I brought to your attention today is killing America. It's taking us down one by one by one by one. And what we need is the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is the answer that will overcome all of the death in the body. Let's bow for prayer.